In our first featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, we have the usual giant slayers, GAM Esports from the VCS, stepping into the shoes of the giant themselves. With an impressive performance from Kyaya Last Worlds, helping to take a game off of top esports and effectively knocking them out of the competition, Can he find the stunts? And Gam stays alive. fans are hoping to see him dominate the playing stage. Loud's top laner Robo from the CB LOL has the hopes of the Brazilian fans riding on his back in this opening matchup. If he is able to be the David to the up and coming Goliath of Kiaia, he may be able to put the wind back in the sails of a region looking for a hero. Gam versus Loud. For the first time in international history, the VCS and the CB LOL will be facing off. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Quickshot, joined by Kulbuk and Raz. We are having a lot of fun today, and I'm expecting this to be a fun series. Not only is it the first time ever that these two regions are going to be going head to head, I think these are two regions that have won the hearts, won the minds of many Western viewers. You know, their performances in international events, both Loud and Gam, are going to be synonymous with every single international League of Legends viewer. Yeah. It's incredible. I was whenever you're doing prep on either of these regions, you're just it feels like that fun from the crowd, from the players, it's infectious. Watching C Bilal specifically, every time Robos makes a play, it's just like, yeah, stands up from his uh seat and he just lets the crowd know he's hyped. Yeah, that was literally did that one one V two. He played on Na against yes. a Malphite and a Saya. He could have ended the game because the enemy team was at Bar Baron trying to contest. He got too busy celebrating, <laughs> recalled, then T V'd back and did end the game in the end, but it's just the fact that the game was prolonged 30 seconds because he wanted to but celebrate. Listen, I, I and mean, that's the excitement we get that you usually only see in FPS, not so much in League. Thing is, though, while, yes, I think in traditional sports in most countries, every single viewer, every single fan of every single game and every single sport in Brazil has that level of intensity True. and passion, right? It is just something that is synonymous with the region. Let's dive a bit deeper into the matchup, a featured, not featured matchup, rather, presented by Mercedes-Benz. We're going to start on the top lane. Let's talk about Kiaia versus Robo. We just mentioned how excited and how high people Yet. What are you anticipating from the actual gameplay, Goldborg? Yeah, well, I think he is uh, one of the best tops we have in play-ins as well. I could literally see him blind pick the jacks and just go um, full ham from laning face and forward. Mm. I kind of see him as a bin light in terms of what he does with the champions too. Um, but Robo on the other side as well have some exciting picks that can be a bit reminiscent of the Adam as well, where we see the Olafs. Also very happy to play the Nah and try and just gain uh, pressure with a ranged top laner like this. But I think a lot of this individual matchup where it gets really exciting is in the top lane. Yeah, and I feel like the stats do tell a very accurate story. Kiaya gets the green light for a reason. He's ultra reliable. You talk to the coaches in that team and they're like, yes, like he, if you ask him to do something for you, he will give it to you. Robo on the other side, he's exciting in team fights. He brings it back, but in lane, it's always a struggle. So I feel like for him, I need to see him play well up against a really tough matchup. Also, just as personalities, Robo is one of the winning top laner in the CB LoL yes. period. Kiaya literally learned the original Vietnamese through League of Legends. Like his story is he dropped out of school because he, they were too pulled and he had to help out the family. He then got really good at League, got a job through League, learned like actually actual Vietnamese through League 2. And it's just an incredible story in the it's game as well. These are some of the biggest personalities that there is from the two regions as well. So absolute huge matchup in the top lane today. Let's start with Robo very briefly because you mentioned it. Not only one of the most winningest, but for the organization, Loud are the first ever CBLOL team to have a three-peat. Yes. Back to back to back regional victories. Um, featuring Robo, of course, one of the this main players, the also coming to international events. So yeah, Robo, 1v2. This laning phase he had in this game was actually really terrible, yeah. but he just built a hole breaker and just decided, I'm still going to 1v9 this game. <laughs> Here he can end the game, <laughs> no, celebrate, no, no, goes exactly back with a recall while the enemy team is there fighting. Like, he can just go and end the game with the minion wave coming through, TP's in after, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, Vamos. they feel the moment. You see how crowded this is from a mountain region as well in the audience, there is just one of the biggest uh, social media phenomenons as well in Loud. They have billions of views on YouTube too. They are a huge team, not just in League, but in Valorant as well. They are just one of the biggest Brazilians. They are the biggest Brazilian name. Yeah, and I mean, they show it to you in team fights. So you already saw like snippets of it, but in general, it's an action-packed team. You pray that they don't change the way they play the game in an yeah. international setting. That's what I hope for, just because like, A, 
it's just who they are. <laughs> Tin Owens has been that guy. And so, like, they, they send a lot of resources in that direction. When team fights happen, they're all on the same page. Now, let's zoom out a little bit because, of course, when you do look at CBLOL historically, there's been streaky periods where one specific team, one specific organization will dominate. Yeah. One or two splits in a row. And that has changed pretty regularly. Now, Loud, the first team ever to go three titles in a row, starting to submit the legacy. Mm -hmm. The exact opposite is true for GAN. They have got themselves their fourth consecutive title. They have eight. They are by far the most dominant organization coming out of the VCS. They have changed their bot lane. GAM also, I think, have been on a slightly downward spiral, I think, from their very high highs after the VCS was unable, unable to compete. So I think expectations will be high. They want to make a statement win today against uh, Loud. That's a great contrast. One team that solidified domestic dominance while GAM has already done that, and they're just hungry for international success, like any kind of movement. Like, talking to the team, that's something that they've zeroed in on. Slater, in particular, actually won domestic titles in 2020 when they weren't able to come in international. So he's been more than hungry to show that he's he can do it. So I'm interested to see the change-up in the bot lane and what it means for the rest of the squad. Yeah, I think it was really curious. Slater has always been this really strong side aid carry as well. And as you mentioned, he was a COVID champion, so we never got to see him internationally. Yeah. He was still very good. The same goes for Palette. They actually brought Palette in just before playoffs to have a run with Palette and Slater because they're former bot lanes together to have this pre-built synergy. When this roster was built, coming out of MSI, they lacked bot lane presence. So this time around, they got a strong side bot laner. The main problem Gam had, though, was actually then implementing, wait, we can't always play for Kiaya, who's this super god top laner. We also need to play for the bot lane now. And that's where we find most of Gam's struggles still. If they have found their identity and say, we will now play towards Slater, we know Kiaya is good enough, yeah. this becomes a very strong team. I like the, mo the point that you made about Palette, the guy who's been in Worlds, this is his third appearance, right? Yeah, back in 2018, so exactly. it's been 4.5 years. Time. It's, it's been, been a been while. Some time. It's nice to have that level of experience from him. Uh, they've been pretty comfortable with him as a, as a general shot caller and playmaker. I think that the, the changes they've made will help them for the better. So let's talk a little bit now about the team's play styles. I hear we're about three, three and a half minutes away from picks and bans. Myself, Gulborg and Raz, well, rather, Gulborg and Raz will be doing picks and bans. I'll be here to read you some fun stats. <laughs> um, let's talk about their play styles, because I think when you do look at Loud and um, Gam, I think both of these teams share some similarities. Uh, aggression, they do look for kills. I don't think they have the most control, so to speak, right? Sometimes the fights are a bit messy. I think especially when you look at how many kills they concede versus how many they secure. So I think there is the potential for a bit of bloody laning phase. Yeah, I mean, this one goes out to Twitch chat. They literally already have a meme about Croc and CP lol if that if he does good is yep Croc, and if he does well in the early, <laughs> bad in the early game, it's nope Croc, because so much of Loud's, uh, some of their early games yeah. is so decided by, um, by Croc. And also in contrast, Levi, of course, who's one of the biggest name of game we haven't even talked about, um, is such an efficient jungler. My main problem with that is sometimes he gets too efficient where it's yeah. like, this full clear is really good. I'm going to get so ahead of the enemy jungler. But it's also like, you could have skipped the camps and gotten one of your laners ahead. So that creates a bit of a predictability. But looking at the junglers in the early games that have an influence on some of the lanes we've talked about um, will be a good indicator because even if the early game is completely controlled by one team, it's going to be all about late game team fights later on. A thousand percent. And I think everybody that looks at uh, specifically this jungler here, as you can see in front of you, like I... I want to see what style of which he's playing. We saw J4 coming out earlier on in the tournament, but what we've seen when they faced top esports at Worlds, he picked up the uh, the Karthus and like rain terror. So I am excited to see what style of play he goes for. I personally want to see that slow pace in game and just allowing him the ability to farm. That's what I'm excited about. Um, something if I look at the side of Loud, it's super chaotic in the laning phase. You mentioned the solo deaths that uh, we got from Robos in lane, the poor performances there. But Root and Sale just are dominant in their own laning phase. So they're getting solo kills on the bot side of the map. So, yeah, of course, that's domestically. I just want to see if they can translate that to this international stage. Yeah, and that's why, as a viewer watching this game, I really want to put this in your brain. If the early game happens and Loud just falls completely behind, yeah. That's pretty much an average loud game for you. <laughs> they win by their team fighting. They're yeah. the kind of team that when their back's against the wall, it's not about the macro, it's just about taking fights. Did it work? No, we'll take another fight. Did it work? We'll take another fight. And then eventually one of these fights, because of their good team fighting, will work out for them. So even if the laning phase is not there, they have an incredible skill fill prowess in some of the team fights. And one thing that I've noted from their recent performances is that I think their vision control got better loud around objectives because they know that that's how they're winning games so they essentially at least have a good an idea how to set up for objectives before it actually starts that's something that i didn't see when they first came to an international stage but through their 3p getting onto the stage now i think that is where their strengths lie
So let's find out a little bit more about these bottom lanes in as well. Uh, I know, um, Gulborg, you're talking a little bit about the fact that Sata is starting, um, sorry, he's starting in the bottom lane over mm -hmm. Palette a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about like what what adaptations we want to see coming out of that, and also looking at Rotten and Seos and you know their approach to laning phase. I think Rotten and Seos laning phase at time can be a bit messy, where one of them will drop a random death. Mm. But I don't think that La um, Gam necessarily will be able to punish this as much yeah. as they could have. I was a bit sad that Gam had to send three of their players to the Asia Games, yeah. because the main problem they had coming out of the regular season and winning VCS was that they weren't always as good at incorpor or incorporating Slater. At times when you watch the games, it feels like these are really good form members and then Slater is just an AD carry if you've slotted in, but the fights are not always played for him. And I think had they had the extra practice, yeah. then I think Levi would have been able to adapt more to a jungle playstyle where you skip camps, you can bot lane more, you try and expose some of the mistakes that we see from Rodin Sayers. But with the lack of practice, it wouldn't even surprise me to see that Loud would actually take today like 2-1 or something like that. I mean, that's what we have to find out, right? What form do they come into this game with? Uh, just quick update for everybody at home as well as my analysts. We are just getting up on stage for the players to walk in, be introduced to LOL Park in Seoul, South Korea. While we're waiting for those players to be introduced, I'm going to come to you, Raz, and say, like, you know, what what would your expectations be for the for the form, for the um, teamwork, the cohesion that you're going to see out of the squad like Gam because of the Asia Games and because of the additional challenges faced from them? I think at least in game one, we're going to be, we've already seen nerves earlier today yeah. uh, in their first game. And without having that, much time to practice, I think that's going to hurt them. So I agree with you. Um, I think at least my focus would be towards Caddy because Caddy has been someone who's been a bit of a glue. He's had some weird picks in general, but in, but he's been known as domestically strong glue, being able to play through uh, Kiaya and also uh, their jungler. And I, I just do want to see him play through Levi comfortably. If we can see that, all of my concerns are washed, and I think they're going to be heavy favorites. I'm gonna That's do something, it. I'm going to do something quite spicy just, just ahead of this. Who's going to win? What's the score going to be and why? Ooh, I, I think, think two. Go, you go first. Okay, I think Loud wins. I think they win 2-1. I think they have the extra prep uh, and practice. I think that uh, Gam's la late game has been messy with a lot of their macro calls too. Like, they're individual really good players. And I think when it comes down to just team fighting, I think Gam is unfortunately going to give some avenues to Loud where they will then come back. I also think that they haven't had... So let's say, like, so, so for me, it's like top side, uh, Gam wins. Mid lane, kind of even between. Jungle can be even as well. And then the bot lane, if Slater is not incorporated into the team, yep. I think Root has just been better and playing team fights and Loud as a general glue can together I, later on. Can I jump in? So you're going 2 1 Loud, yes. but you're 60 40, 65 35. Like, you wouldn't be that surprised if Gam stepped up? Like, oh, absolutely not. Okay. I think Gam okay. has the potential. I just think that Close they didn't have time to read the potential. Even speaking to casters as well of the regions, then it's like the Brazilian casters I'm gonna get feeling prediction. hopeful. Because oh, if boy. you look behind you, I think the players are just about getting... So I need your prediction before we meet them. It's going to be a little bit more fun That's before fair. we get a draft. <laughs> I actually go 2-1 in the opposite de direction for Gam. I mean, give me some reasons because yeah. I don't actually know... I don't actually know when we're going to throw. Why, why will Gam win? And uh, other than spices. <laughs> superior players, I think. Uh, Katy, specifically uh, Levi and Kiaya are just incredible. Oh, we have strong. two minutes, so we don't have to rush. We don't oh, okay, okay, nice. I can, I can talk a little bit more. Uh, I think they're a lot more flexible through topside. I think something that um, Loud really lack is when they get into the mid game, they tend to drop waves on side lanes for the fights. And as long as Gam just take a much slower game pace, that uh, Levi will be ahead of the pace. And we're going to look at Kiaya playing a lot more of an aggressive nature. Ooh. And Rob's, Rob, Rob okay, going to have so listen, listen. I've, I've just heard from producers, because yeah. we have a minute and a half. I'm actually going to ask Ashina Dagda to evaluate the predictions. I don't need you to predict. You're going to be casting this game. So he has, he has come to the <laughs> But oh, what so do you just think of my We get to wreck opinions. them. We get to wreck these yes. guys. Go yes. on, boys. Uh, so, you got. so I think I think Goldberg's being a coward and covering all his all his bases. Uh, Agreed. And, uh, <laughs> and I think uh, I think Raz is correct. That's uh, my opinion. I Double thumbs up. Disagree. <laughs> I think GB is correct that it's going to be led win. But That's LEC bias. That's LEC bias. That's LEC bias. But hang on, hang on, Jets. What I do like though. law bias. I think CB law is just LEC bias. Yeah. <laughs> what I do like, though, is is I think because there is a bit of split, like this this series could go either way. We don't 100% know what to expect from the teams, yeah. you know? Mm. So, I mean, um, because we've been talking a lot, Ashin Dagda, what would you want to say for your pre-match? Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think the big is, is that a bus coming right now? 
<laughs> well, uh, no, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, it is, it is exceptionally close, though. But I, I, yeah. still I still think that the VCS have yet to show us their full, no. their full potential. Yeah, and that's the biggest problem that I see with it, is that, like, I think for CB Law, they're very consistently after 20 minutes. I think for Gam, I don't think they set up well for early Rift Heralds and that correctly. So I think that's where they're not going to be able to get enough of a lead in the early stages to try and snowball up before later able to come back at the later stages. And also, I think the meta is just shifting into Tin Owen's territory. Like, favorite champion yeah. Syndra, he didn't play a single game of Tristana the entire way through, and now that's out the window, so that only helps them, right? So, honestly, I think they're in a fantastic spot. I think Loud 2-0, easy right. goes. That's enough talking from us. We're going to send it back so to the nice. analysts so they can talk a bit more um, about it. I also, I apologize if she didn't up. My brain just froze, dude. I, I didn't have a question, so yes, yeah. I did. Oh, Carlos, how would you have Obviously, done my free match? <laughs> we can see the players walking on stage right now. Translations on the subtitles up this time around, which I'm very happy about. A little bit of support there Got in Lowe Park. Here. Let's go, Gam. Gulborg, give me some players. Who do you think is going to be prioritized in draft here? Have we surprised at all? We've seen two best ofs. Well, we'll, I guess we'll let the introductions play out and then we'll get back to pre-match. Oh, there we go. And just missed the beginning of that one. Obviously, that'll be taken to stage, but yeah, I'll come back to this yeah, one. To go, to go back to your to question here, I think Dagda really hit the nail on the head there as well, talking about some of these uh, control mages for Tin Owns. That's going to be pivotal. I yeah. think that they need, Gam needs to be careful of a potential poppy coming out from Croc as well. One of his best facilitating picks, and it stops a lot of what Levi would want to do. The most pivotal champion in pretty much all of the minor regions as an AD carry was Sire, and that's because so much of these team fights are decided by, well, the team fight itself. So having an AD carry that has self heal just makes it in infinitely easier. If you see an AD carry that is Sion, one of the minor, minor regions, you can already up their win percentage by almost 10% by doing that. I mean, listen to this. Slater went 8 and 3 on the champion route, went 6 and 2. Both exactly. of them second most played high, high win ratios on those champions as well. And I would love to see some counter pick priority for Tinones. Uh, in the finals, I love the fact that he is moving towards like Xerath as a counter pick towards Azir. It's been seen a little bit here and there, not too much success globally, but it, it just showcases for how a long of a career that he's had, the confidence that he has to go towards counter picks that maybe he hasn't played as much recently because he's picked it probably two to three years before that. Now, the other, the other challenge or the other question yes. I have for you is what do you think Levi's going to play? When you do look at the most played champions across the board, yeah. you can add two players on a team up and they play less individual champions than Levi has played. He's wild, he's wacky. He could go standard. He also could go out there, right? So I'm intrigued to see what he's bringing back both from Asia Games as well as performance here with the rest of the squad. First things first, Lee Sin's been banned too many yeah. times. He is the Lee Sin god. I would love to see Lee Sin. But if we move past that, if he gets banned once more, then I'd go towards J4 and Sejuani just because he's also a pretty damn good engager. And for how often they team fight, they need him to be on that. Yeah, and you know, historically, one of the main champions Levi got known for as well was his Nocturne. Nocturne's <laughs> yes. been a great True. champion as well, paired up with Ninko so many times where we've seen them go Nocturne Ultimate. I have no idea where anyone is coming from. It is a normal minion. Is this an actual Nico coming through? <laughs> and that's great at creating chaos and something that they've been doing as well. You know, it's a great comp that's been coming up that we haven't seen so far with Nocturne, Cannon, TP, Flank, those type of things that have oh, torn Freak, teams Freak apart. Is so happy right now. Yes, he's loving it. And I think that would be a great composition for them. And I know there's a guy out there who's probably screaming about Wukong's Levi's most played champion yes, as always, yeah. one of his signature, and it really is. Yeah. But I'm doubtful at how well the Wukong's now going to perform. But I mean, Levi's still been willing to pick it after the nerfs, but I, I'm not hopeful of seeing it. That's that's why I'm just intrigued, right? It's just when I do look at all 10 players on the Rift, it is Levi the one that I'm the most inclined to think would be willing to do something a bit True. out there, or a little bit different, a little bit against the grain, right? Yeah. Levi's never gone a bit like super, super crazy, but obviously you can see the players, they are setting up on stage, and earlier today we were talking about how we really wanted to have like a little bit of extra time to set up the match intro. We've really got a lot of time, got a lot to, of time to think this up. through. Um, Gam, I think we're on blue side, if I remember correctly, right? So, Loud being on red, um, in terms of the uh, strategy, Loud or blue, thank you for that Perfect. one. Correction, okay, so my, my notes are wrong here. Um, in terms of like the approach to the draft then and players you want to target, who do you shut down? As yes, we are loading into draft. Let's Love go. It. So Raz, Gulborg, it's all on you, boys. Well, the puppy's already coming through here, and I think that's a great ban. By seeing a puppy ban, you also have to think about a Lee Sin ban as well. Yeah. And I think they've they've actually done a lot of research here. The the Jacks being banned away, that was one of my main win conditions for Gam, was just saying, hey, if Kiai just blinds Victor, I don't see Robo winning a single matchup into it. So I think they're prioritizing a lot of the right target bans leading into the first draft. With Seos and Palette, I would expect Rakan to be a pretty high priority. Maokai Ban is already a, a good one that's paired up well 
with Rakan. Um, I don't expect it to be first pick, but I think Gam will look for a 1-2 on Rakan. It's just been so good so far. Zaya Rakan has been the standard, so I wonder just I want to see if the response from Loud is there. Open as well. I mean, last one. I'm so ready for this to either be like a side ban, but if you ban side, then Lee Sin. I don't think Lee Sin will be blind pick, but I could easily see Gam go for it on a 1 2. Javan also still available. Saw Junji play that earlier. And no, it's also going to be a target ban on Robo there. Of course, we mentioned it earlier. He plays a lot of Olaf, but there's a lot of OPs yeah. uh, open for you and available here. We've not seen too many games just yet, so it's hard to grasp really what makes or breaks these, uh, these, these first picks. The one thing we have seen across all three series, and this is the obvious, like as all these League of Legends has been. Renekton has still been very high priority phase yes. one in terms of the picks, but I am liking to see or interested to see how this Orianna continues to develop throughout the rest of the series. And now Gam, where do they go? Like you mentioned, Lee Sin is open, Jarvan is open, Zaya is open. I would expect something like a cannon, maybe picked a little later on. Orianna has been the pick that we've seen a little bit dominate just yesterday. Uh, so we're expecting it to feature a lot more as well. Exactly, and it's moving up in priority. Earlier on, we're seeing it be picked on 4-5 or something to that nature, but now we'd be seeing it just as a straight up blind. Uh, makes sense here for Kadi, and it's a good setup for a ball delivery system for whatever Levi wants to pick. So just great overall follow-up engage. But to hit on the Renekton a little more, with Loud's priority around Rift Herald, that's just going to be my focus. I want to see what Robo is able to do in early Rift Herald fights with that. Yeah, I really think that Sire pickup was very important. Had you not picked Sire, I'm expecting a Syndra to come through from Tinoncia. They could have probably picked it with a Syndra Sire rotation. Now you don't really have to look for that. But Root's been a scary Kaiser too. So it wouldn't surprise me to just see a Syndra Kaiser come through while you still have the availability of picking these champions before they get banned in the second ban phase. I mean, that Kaiser is Root's most played champion. 10 games this summer, uh, eight and two on the particular champion. And wonder well or not, um, wonder whether or not we're going to end up seeing this Oriana Azir matchup a whole lot. Is something we were theorizing coming yeah. into the tournament, something Tenons has played as well. Azir is fantastic into the Zaya, so that's an expectation that I have. Also, I'm expecting a Nautilus to be picked up on the side of Gam, so it would be a good way of disengaging if that's the pick. But the point that you already made, Kaisa, looks already getting lucky. Yeah, and you can just look at this right now that Nautilus would be a great pickup right now to just kind of counter, counter the bot lane if you're looking for it. But you also have to make the Cognus uh, decision now saying, do I actually want that Levi Lee Do I want them on a carry right now? I don't think it has to be a priority just because the jungle pool is still as big as it is, but the support pool will be slimmer and slimmer. So I think the Nautilus will be the best pickup here. All right, already an interesting... Uh, just taking a look at the first phase right now, I do love the Kaisa being picked up for Root, just how well he's been playing domestically. Just giving him the power for an engage. If, let's say, Robo finds a nice stun or a pick being made by Rakan here for Root, uh, Seosh, like, I think putting the power into uh, Root's hands is the way to go. And listen, anybody who's watching from Brazil or anybody who's cheering for Loud is going to be ecstatic with these first three picks because every single one of them is the number one most played and the most successful for their respective players. The two that were missing is Poppy and LeBlanc. Poppy's been banned away. Yeah. I'm not expecting the LeBlanc to come in. But for Loud, this is pure comfort. It obviously works in the patch as well. In phase two, Sejuani once again finds herself in the ban pool. Loud are taking their time on their first ban. What I'm afraid of for Gam is if Loud starts to pick a little bit more range. Because you can already see um, good AP Kaisa pick here, just trying to pick off uh, Orianna and Zaya's smaller range pool. So like I'm thinking Jace as a strong option. For Tinones, if the option looks good as it goes into 4-5, then I would love it and it makes their comp really strong around poke. All right, Nocturne Band coming through as well. I'm, it, I was really curious to see that Cassandra got banned. Most mm -hmm. of the time, Renekton are happy about that matchup. He gains lane prior, not to do much with it. He just gets played for himself. He slowly but surely builds up a gold lead, but it also means that they are scared a bit of Kiaya. Another champion that Kiaya could play that's just straight up not a carry could be an Orn here. We've seen him multiple times, and so many times these games as well have been dictated by the team fight. But no, it is actually going to be that respect paid to Levi. I was wondering wondering if Croc was looking for it himself in case they would not fourth pick it. Um, but for now, Jungle Pool is still very wide and open. That J4, as we've talked about, is available. Uh, and it would actually be do good for Croc fun. just against Sire. Do something fun. I want Levi to do something fun. I'm expecting the J4. I just want something more fun. Ooh. You might get it. I like the Rumble Ooh. Hover here. Even though you have a lot of AP already within the composition, um, pick up a Void Staff. That's a really good bully. Do you think Levi that. runs at the jungle? I mean, I'm expecting that top lane, right? But... Yes. Like... <laughs> I don't know, I've got the tingle. Nevertheless, <laughs> it's locked in. Right, now we're going to find it from Loud. How are they going to round out their composition? Does Tinoids go for that, Jace? Obviously play that poke options. 
What is Croc going to be running in jungle himself? So I, I mean, I would just be happy with a J4 Sintra rotation here. Like, J4 is super good into side due That's to the one. fact that you can go for the combo with your EQ, then she ults, and when she then ults, well, you just ult her yourself, and then yeah. she's stuck in there. She does not have a dash. It's going to be a classic, though, from Tin Ons as well. As I said, they played a lot of Nico too. I think Syndra could have been just as good into the Ori. You kind of force her to buy the Merc Treads. Um, there's not too much Merc Tread value just yet. Just, uh, well, outside of all the champions so far. And pairing this up with J4 gives you very scary team fighting. It's funny. So in the first phase, when we when we talked about Nautilus as a pick going into Rakan, yeah, great in isolation. But now you're looking at the comp as a whole. Really tough for Nautilus to try and take fights into Nico uh, and Rakan. Uh, uh -huh. if, if a fight were to happen, he's just... I know we talk about him as an int champion. That's going to be a lot of ints if uh, the fight doesn't look great from the get-go. So Jar Jarvan being a hover, just I'm cook confused. him up in the hot Talk pot. to me about this Viego. My, my eyebrows, I haven't seen him play this I summer. mean, it, it's just like I often see the Viego. I don't think he's as good as these teams value them to be. So much of it ha have happens in the team fight, not so much in the early game. It's not been where Loud has found, found their true strength. Another thing is, you've just created a, an insane scary Wombo combo on the enemy team. That's a Jarvan with an Orianna that gets a combo with the ball. They yeah. all go into the mean grind, and then all of a sudden, they're getting grilled by an Equalizer on top of them, and the team fight just looks insane for Gam. Yeah, I'm completely aligned with you. I like Gam's composition. The die from Loud is not really that threatening as long as Slater is able to, of course, we'll have Flash, of course, we'll have Ulti. There are a lot of ways for him to get out of the situation. And it's just a very simple Wombo combo off J4 Ulti, Rumble Ulti, Orianna. Like, there's a lot for Gam to just flip the switch and take the fight. I'm over the moon that we got a lot of time to introduce these teams to talk about the compositions. I've heard your predictions already. Now you've seen the draft. I'll give you an opportunity to change. Who wins game one? I actually think Gam is looking really good here. Yeah! So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you do, huh? Uh, yeah, well, they got the Sire. I said that were already up it with 10% of the win percentage. They have a Rumble. They get JFA. They have Ori. I think on this patch, that's just some of the best OPs you can have. So, Raz, you're just gloating here. You happy with this as well? Yes, Gam, I am. Game Thank one? you very much. I expected it. The draft makes it a little easier. All right, that does it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience, everybody at home. We're about to jump over the costas. Oh, uh, tag to Ashin. Give me a high five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, 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 Yes! <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. That was terrible. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> we had a whole thing set up. We like, oh, let's do like a movement thing. And it was like, not in this suit. Just, slap, just yeah, slap all the hands. Slap yeah. all the hands. Everyone going, <laughs> but the teams are locked and loaded. And we are kind of figuring themselves out, kind of seeing where these two teams want to go for. This is their first game here at Worlds 2023. And again, for the probably for the first time in a very long time, Loud are coming in as a pretty pretty hot and pretty kind of favored in these things. But as they say on the desk, this draft is going to be difficult. You just said you don't favor Loud. No, I don't. I said most said people do. <laughs> I said the perception was, I prefer Graham. <laughs> you will not twist my words. <laughs> well, Leod already trying to see if they can get Kiaia here. Good oh. sidestep. Nice sidestep. A little bit of damage. Should be fine. No real CC. If you start with the CC on the Renekton level one, you're not going to have a fun time. Yeah, also, I mean, with a minute just coming up onto the, t the clock, they'll be fine to reset and come back in. So not a huge amount there, but also not a huge amount of back invested for Leod, right? They'll get some vision control down on that top side. They'll spot out with the right is going to happen if maybe Levi's going to try and go for some sort of early gank in towards the mid lane, but um, at the moment, you're just going to be able to back away. So not too much on either side really coming out there. Yeah, bit of vision, a little bit of uh, early warding as such, but outside of that, not really a lot else. I mean, just count your minions. That's all you got to do, Kati. Yeah, he's going to make sure he definitely, definitely, now, realize, yeah, definitely yeah. now realizes, like, wait a minute. <laughs> but I mean, look, that's the, it's funny. It's like a little mini game that you have, obviously, with the Nico, and we'll be keeping an eye on that for it. But obviously, coming into this game, I love what Gamma built up for themselves. Demasi and Hot Pot is what I like to call it there, with the Cataclysm into the Equalizer. You add in a little bit of Pilt over Spice as well with the Orianna uh, Shockwave. That that's a massive wombo combo if you get caught. And honestly, why, like we were talking before the game, saying, look, Croc probably should have taken the Jarvan. Yep. I mean, you get good luck up for the Aurea and the Isaiah. You're able to set yourself up. Slater will get a little bit of a hit here, but Pilot able to keep things in check. But honestly, I think you're kind of, you're setting up so nicely here for Gam. Like, Root's going to struggle with that. Tin Owns is going to struggle with that as well. Now, at least you do have a good amount of counter engage, like from Tin Owns yourself, but hold on. Uh, level two does get hit. The Ignite goes down, but feel like Slater really wanted to fully commit to that. Now they can fully turn back on. Hello, oh, Slater goes fully in, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get killed down. I think Root should be able to walk away. And that's going to be just a nice little turnaround. It felt like Gam could have had it, but Loud are the ones with first blood. Yeah, once the level two was hit from Loud, Slater wasn't really following up from Pallet. Not really the communication there to be like, hey, I really want to go for this. Now, Slater does try and follow up with the Flash himself, but no damage. Seos gets to kill himself, and Loud already on the board. Seos... 
Getting himself that first blood and that wave's in such a terrible position for Gam as well. It's really going to be difficult to kind of get that one back, but still advantage for Loud to get in the bot lane. It all came from Gam being very, very aggressive. We'll see what they can use with that a little bit later on. But I'm also keeping my eyes on the jungle because both flashes were burnt by Gam in this one. So we see it here, right? Palak does go forward. Great flash, great setup. But Slater not really in a position to follow up as he was trying to take the last CS. So Seos goes in. You get the proc of the passive from Palak, and it's good damage turnaround from Slater, but not enough left in the tank then to try and finish this out so root gets the walk out just burning the pot so you have both flashes now still on loud and look at where Croc is. He's already started to move back down towards his bot side. I think he's going to be looking for a gank. Yeah, I 100% expect him to be able to do that, but it's going to be interesting to see now if you give the respect you need. Gam need to be very aware. This wave state is so yeah. painful. I mean, look at the yeah, like, I mean, and there's nothing they can do. They know they have to just stand backwards because if they walk any way forward, it's a two level difference between Croc and the bot lane. Yeah, and, the, and Jarvan's already in the top side. He wants to look for a dive to see if he can counteract this play in the bot lane. Yeah, they're going to try and see if they can go for a full dive here. It'll be difficult going up against Robo, but they're going to be able to get him fully taken in. Good flash there by Kiaya. And they get themselves out on bot side. So Gam, not to be outdone. They will, unfortunately, still have a bad time bot, but at least they're making something else happen around the map. Yeah, Seos had to burn his flash to try and make that happen, though. Wasn't quite able to get there. Gets the cleanse out of Slater. Um, but on the top side, yeah, as you said, like Levi managing to follow that flash from Robo with his own flash, gets the kill and sets up nicely. So at least for Gam, they're still getting some pressure on the map. A little bit of pressure and keeping that Renekton down is always a nice little thing. Let's have a look at the replay here. Because again, it's just clean, really nicely done there, waiting for as much time as they possibly can. Yeah, Robo's trying to clear out the wave here. That's where he goes and then flashes in, but Levi, good reactions with his own flash to follow through on the flag and drag. And then we get the look of boss. Pallet hooks out, Slater gets knocked up, but you can see the cleanse comes through. He gets to walk out. Good block from Pallet anyway, so didn't really need to use that cleanse, but either way, Gamma able to get away from that one on the bottom. Yeah, we'll see them now going a bit aggressive on that top side. I still a bit of damage here, but uh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the Renekton really wants this one here. The flash oh. forward, he gets overheated, he has enough damage! And that top lane matchup is really going in favor of Gam now. Croc trying to equalize it out. He flashes forward just to confirm it and will be able to trade it back two for two on the board. Tin owns now up here though as well, just to make sure they can try and catch that wave. But really nice job there from Kiaia now. Seos, Palace, level advantage over towards Loud. They even Slater still level two on this one and just about. ticks over to level three. This wave finally crashing in means he'll be able to pick up a bit, but a lot of damage already done. You can see nearly 40 CS to 11 on the spot side. Yeah, I mean, look, the featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, it is still Robo and Kiaia, and I think right now Kiaia is having a much better time of it, so we'll see how that really affects the game, because the rumble in the mid game with those equalizers can just completely take over. The big question mark for me is how this starts to come through at level 8. You have Kiaia, who's very much in control of this matchup, and if he can then lean that in towards the, the Rift Herald, that's it's gonna be fantastic. But one of the big things that I've seen is kind of how Gam tend to fumble their first Rift Tail play. They'll try and send Caddy who has TP down to that bot side, but he's oftentimes either, well, doesn't have his TP up and available or is late on the reset. And Slater and Pallet then aren't in a position to try and go for that Rift Tail as well. And it gives the opportunity for the enemy team to set up, find kills, find opportunities. So especially against a team like Loud, where you know they're most threatening post 20 minutes, having those first 15 minutes confirmed in your direction are the best way to try and go against this team. There it goes. First six minutes have been pretty equal. A little bit of an advantage there for Loud. Very much uh, centralized into Rouge and the CS lead, about 20 or so. Maybe 15 after these when Unions do end up getting taken out. But this is a, a game or a series that Loud will be feeling fairly confident in. It's a series they should be able to come out with a win and keep themselves in that upper bracket. That's the big thing right now is that with the double elimination, you're not done and buried, but getting yourself that extra little life is so key. And for Loud, it's going up against PSG Talon as well, who knocked them out of MSI, trying to see if they can find that rematch. But Gam, there are no pushovers here. Like, seriously, this has been a great early game for them. They've got good control. I mean, bot lane is definitely going to be an issue for them. It's just going to be a case of if Levi can try and have, find that success to skirmish around the top side. You can see Loud kind of realizing that, like, we will take this Dragon nice and early, make sure we're able to set ourselves up for success, whereas Gam are trying to play towards their own strong side, which is the top half of them. Yeah, and I think the big thing as well is that this is just really smart there from Croc as well, just saying, look, we have massive pressure bot side, let's just get the Dragon start that stacking early. I'm curious if they actually go for the dive on the top side here. Like, you can see that Levi's in position, Kaya has ult, level 6 for Robo means it might be a bit difficult, but, uh, I mean, getting something going as this Reptile's about to spawn is going to be great. See whether they want to try and put that priority. Levi hasn't really been bot lane at all. He came bot just to kind of hover a little bit, but outside of that, didn't really do much else. Sales 
Jumps in, Root gets rooted, but outside of that, it's just going to be pain, unfortunately, for uh, Slater and uh, and Pallet. They're not really going to be able to kind of get much of a kill priority. I mean, Serrated Dirk in the difference right now between Root and, and Slater makes it so difficult for him to walk up. And you can see here, he's just taking a fight because he knows he can kind of go for it. Even with the Root coming out, it's still very much, uh, you know, LLL coming out on top. Yeah, just about. It is a little bit more cautious because as that minion wave comes in, a lot of the damage has gone from the Q, so we'll have... Oh! Oh! Flashing, get the W, and now we can see a bit of a move on the top side. The equalizer not going to be utilized just yet. Kiaya knows he's dead. And that's just Katsi not really in position to help because Levi was on the dragon, or sorry, on the Rift Herald. Now the Pop Blossom come out. They're going to get a flash out from the Oriana, and everyone's a little bit isolated. Do they get the Rift Herald? That is the question. Levi's going to have to flash away. He'll get the kill onto the min onto the onto the Rift Herald, but he won't be able to collect the side. Big wins for Loud. Kill on the top side onto Kiaia that goes over towards Robo. The kill on bot side coming through from Root as well. Like Root has been so good at getting these solo kills in lane, and now once more picking up those solo kills once more when it gets to the world stage. Loud really coming up trumps right now, getting that kill on the top side. And it was just a load of disconnected efforts from the side of Gam. This one was just straight up Root saying, I'm stronger and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I thought he might flash forward initially to try and get more Q isolated, but we're being to the fight. Caddy's gone. Caddy is dead. Root picks up his second kill. He's got an Umbral Glaive first item. So he is so powerful right now and he is not wasting any time making people know about it. Yeah, this is one of the big changes we've seen to the build path coming through from the Kaiser, where it's like, I'll go for the Umber Glaive first, get serrated, get access to that Q Evolve as well. But it's such an early spike with this Umber Glaive as well, because it's such a cheap item that you can actually play very aggressive in lane. But I mean, Katy just not realizing Sales was there, tries to interrupt the back, and Sales immediately flashing in. He knows the flash was already burnt in that Rift Herald fight, and Katy gets caught out for it. Yeah, that was just. Just a little bit uh, unfortunate there, just not recognizing where everyone was on the map, and that's why you need to have tabs as much as you best, uh, as much as you possibly can. But I mean, this bot lane advantage is just skyrocketing. But the problem is that, like the top lane advantage the Gam have, they couldn't really play through. Like Croc did a good job of getting in there with Robo as Gam was trying to set up for the Rift Herald fights, and we said, "Hey, look, the big thing I want to focus on is how do Gam set up for the first Rift Herald?" They fumble it here, they give the advantage to Loud, and now Loud are starting to slowly but surely gain more and more pressure off of that. So I think this is where Loud as long as they can keep this up, are going to be in a good spot. They crash this wave on bot, should be able to back away before Levi can really get into position to, to do anything. And may even try and push their advantage to like deep vision here in the bot side jungle, although going to back off it looks like for the moment. And as well as that, like, you know, just having the fact that Root goes the Umbral Glaive, obviously that's the new build path, but Umbral Glaive is just one, so cheap, but two, so effective, not even just in the stats, but it's from its active as well, clearing out vision, constantly having priority, and, you know, anyone looks for a sneaky little TP play or, you know, a, a Jarvan trying to sneak into the side of the river, they're just not going to be able to get it. Yeah, and it just, it, as you say, trying to control that bot side becomes a hell of a lot easier, but again, like you can see now, two kills to him, serrated dirt completed, like, and you haven't even got, <laughs> you got half an item completed yeah. towards Slater on the opposite <laughs> side. Like, it is such an uneven fight. Like, Slater not only has his arms tied behind his back, he's probably got a foot at this stage as well. So, if for LLL, just try and continue to play around this bot side, bring Croc into the equation, Sales, having that level six available can try and set up. Now, it will be tough. Ult for Zaya, Flash for Zaya, Cleanse. But if you can burn those before, like, Dragon in 50 seconds, that makes things 10 times easier for this next fight. Absolutely, and look, it's not, it's not as if Gam don't have ways back into it, but like you said, it's going to be tough. You've got plenty of AoE, you've got plenty of Wombo Combo, but to be able to get it, and this is exactly what we were talking about, Root's just able to walk up, constantly clear out the vision and say, look, you don't have a way of moving into this vision, and like, straight away, look at the damage! <laughs> Half his HP from a Q on an auto! <laughs> yeah, Palada definitely feeling the hurt a little bit from Root right now. And I mean, straight up, that's just going to give control towards Loud to actually go for a dragon as a spawns here. Like, Root too low to really be the engage tool that you would like him to be. And maybe can try and follow up, but Levi's on top side. Vision control completely belongs to Gamma on this bottom end of the map. And uh, the support of Croc here for Seus at all points in time. H how do you try and break this as Gamma? We'll see if they can. Dragon does spawn as Gam now move their jungler and mid laner down towards this. They'd have priority, but it's going to be neutralized now with that. Uh, 
Nico just kind of keeping things going, but I mean, yeah, like the, the just just the damage profile available for Loud at the moment is just insane. Even having that Triforce is available to them as well just makes it so much harder. And yeah, you don't have any way of stopping the stack. And this is the thing as well: you started the stack so early, seven minutes, you get the next one on basically off spawn. You're looking at a 23, 24 minute Dragon Soul, and it's you know an Ocean Soul is nothing to be sniffed at. Yeah, I mean, Croc has just been able to sneak in here and get so much of this. Now going to be able to pick up the blue buff basically in the face of Levi as well, because Sales. Slater is trying to try and get this one going there. The feathers go flying. They've used nothing. They used literally a battle dance, and that was it. That was and all they, they had to get. Yeah, they got a TP and an ult. Like, insane yeah. amounts of priority in this boss side for, for Loud. And you can kind of tell, look, Gam, feel like the backs are against the wall. Immediately, the TP comes down to bot side to try and prevent it, but Loud never overextended. They don't use Aeos' ult. You get push in mid now to get a plate for Tin Owns as well. And this is the slow, calculated style that Loud tried to you go for. You do it again. Yeah. You just go for it again. The cleanse is there. This this time though with the flash so maybe a bit difficult they're gonna try and commit into croc who does have to heartbreaker himself out as the nautilus ultimate was committed but yeah i mean look they're, they're using so much just to keep slater in this game you do need to be careful in this scenario though is loud because you don't really have a tanky member like croc isn't tanky sales isn't tanky so if you go underneath that tower and there's multiple members of gan there you're going to know about it very very quickly so i do like that they just kind of backed off there kind of bitten oh he's committing though because he got the cue the isolation <laughs> And he gets himself the four procs on the auto attack as well. That's just too easy. That's two solo kills. Yeah. For the EV carry. <laughs> That's not how this game functions. You're supposed to at least put a shield down, Corteo, so you look good. This is insane from Root. He is popping off in the early stages. And I mean, you heard the desk, right? Once Root's in a good spot, it's going to be fantastic. And right now, he is looking sublime. And the great thing about it as well is that Loud are kind of working around him and working around the kind of win condition that he has presented as we kind of look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. And yeah, I mean, 2100 is just an insane that's number to be hit. Diff, that, yeah, I was going to say, like, that's insane. He is the gold lead. Like, he is the, all of the gold lead from the bot side. But as I was saying, Loud are doing so well at accommodating that as well because Rambo has just kind of said, all right, cool. Well, I'm not the carry. All I have to do is survive. Marvel Mar 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 straight away. I'm not going to be in team fights. We're not looking to team fight right now. So I'm not worried about having that big gore drinker for those big fights. Yeah, it's just absolutely absurd. And again, you, what do you try and respond with his game? Like, we've had Levi trying it into different positions, but top lane fell apart. Rub has been playing relatively safe. They hasn't really tried to get into mid lane, which I thought maybe was an option, but realistically, Seos has kind of been beaten to the punch in that position, and he's been kicked out of his bot side. So trying to find angles of attack into mid lane just isn't really happening right now. No, it is not. The one thing I will say that's going in Gam's favor for now is that it's a very low uh, attack range in terms of actually sieging down a turret. So taking the turret is actually quite difficult for the side of Loud. It will take multiple kills for them to be able to do it, but I mean, this is just a really smart little bit of play. It's like, if I land the W, we go in. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, immediately the damage comes down. And again, this is the strength of this new build. You get so much lethality early. You get so much damage early. And uh, the Loud fans, very happy to see that one come through. I mean, they are looking strong. They are looking confident right now. And they are looking like a team who's ready to kind of put the put the pressure down. They're a team that looks like they want that rematch against PSG Talent. Like, this is a team that got knocked out against them in MSI. I mean, even Croc uh, we, has been playing under the name Son of Junja in Portuguese over in CB LOL. Like, PSG Talent have been living in these guys' heads. So for this, this is a we want our revenge. We want to go up against PSG Talent and knock them out at Worlds and take that spot in the group stage. Have a bit of to go for it, of course. Double elimination, this is the winner's side. So win this, you get yourself an opportunity to get yourself towards that final match, the qualification match, of course. And of course, we see it from the other side as well tomorrow. But this first group is uh, definitely starting to, to heat up just a little bit. And look for Gam. Expectations for the VTS, they were kind of the, the second tier of teams. They were always kind of touted as this team that we would, or this region that would always be able to kind of bounce back. Yes, it was a very unfortunate time where they couldn't really go to internationals, but we always kind of said that they would be able to do it. Right now, they are very firmly on the back foot, nearly three and a half thousand gold down. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been the aggression that we always talk about from Vietnam. It's just been unfortunate that, I mean, Seos and Root got a good control of that bot lane early. 
despite the fact Kiaia was able to get control over topside, that was kind of turned around by Croc. So I think Gam want to try and find these big team fights now where maybe they can lock down Root and Tin Owens, get that ultimate combo off at Levi, Kiaia, and Kasi. That's kind of their big way back into this, but it needs to land on the key members. And the thing is, though, is that Kiaia was kind of moving down, cheating down, but it means that he left that top lane pretty much for free. Now, Hallett having to lose his flash because he's just not in a position to get caught like that. And little by little, bit by bit, Loud are just wrestling back control. They're not letting the side of Gam have a foothold. Yeah, and you talk about, look, in a team fight, yes, Loud are very low range because you want to try and get a lot of the ultimates off, but you got good poke that can come through from Tin Owns, the W from Root as well. Like, there's a lot of damage that can come through quite quickly here, so you do have to be very, very careful as now Rift out in mid lane, sets up for the push, sets up for the control again, going in Loud's favor on that bot side jungle, and they rotate back towards the, the dragon. And, I mean, you're you're in complete item down for Slater. You can't compete in these team fights if you can't get the Wombo off. And Robbo does exactly what Robbo needs to do. I'm on weak side. It's fine. We're going to back away. We get a tower. We get a dragon. There's nothing to do really outside of just walk away. If they get the tower, sure, it was an equal trade in their sense for the towers. But now you are on Ocean Soul point at 18 minutes. That is a 23 Ocean Soul fight that you have to go for as Gam. If you let this Renekt and Viego combination get themselves an Ocean Soul, they're never dying. And in my professional opinion, Oshin, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awful place to be. Is that the technical term, is yeah. it? The, the, the legal term. <laughs> it's a bit of a whoopsie, as yeah. we say in the business. But <laughs> Big oof, if you yeah. do want to say it. Like. But it's also like, you got root now. So basically the way this build works is you now go up towards an Asher's Tooth. So you end up in uh, being able to get that AP damage into your build as well. A lot of that attack speed. And you're just in such a good spot. Like, this is so incredibly hard to try and operate off of now. Um, and with Root this far accelerated, yes, this build kind of does play off of Lethality and can't fall off, but I mean, it's, it's not even 20 minutes into the game. It's three, nearly th or two and a half, three kills. Um, it's insane. Yeah, it is. An immediate flash has to do with like Kiaia, but he gets caught out anyway, and they go straight in with the assassination. Kiaia trying to save the tower if he can, but not really a lot else going for them and loud looking good right now really starting to put down a serious performance <laughs> i mean oh no Slater. Slater. No, 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 no. he's gonna lose his cleanse won't lose anything <laughs> else but i mean that's already just walking to the lane in arguably the safest position to go for he wasn't cheating he went the, the long way around and he still lost something look the only place to save for Gam is their own base, and uh, Robo's just ignoring them. They use the TP on the tower that's going down. Why are you doing this, Gam? You can't fight that. And they lose the Nautilus as well. Palace becomes putty in their hand, and it's just, it's just win after win after win for Loud. They are looking solid. Yeah, I, the, the entire top side belongs to them. Turret gone, jungle gone. I mean. Baron is up in 10 seconds, and I mean, honestly, that might it. be gone. Yeah. Like, yeah. But this is super nice, right? Again, Robo is like, hey, I've got this Maw. I can just ignore the damage from Kiaia. Kiaia is forced to flash, but they know that Root's in a position to just follow up here. And again, like, look at the vision control that is in the jungle right now. There's so little to spot out these plays. But Loud, no, hey, look, we actually have spotted Jarvan is starting to move to bot side. We can try and go for this play here. We own the top half of the jungle, so we know exactly what we're up against. Kill the tower, use the demolish, and there's just no thing that Gam can do in this scenario. It's just little small mistakes for Gam as well. The TP coming in on an already dead turret, it just feels like it's just compounding it. And do you know what the terrifying thing is? This is the part of the game that Loud are better at. The post 20 minute mark yeah. is when they come alive. Uh, and Caddy is feeling it. Caddy is feeling it, feeling the pressure as well. Double knock up comes in on top of it. They get the tangled barbs down. Levi forced to flash away. That's a TP coming in from the rumble just to run away because he realizes he has no business being here. You have no reason to ever take these fights. And Loud are looking to put a serious marker down. They are coming for PSG. Yeah, damn, Gam, you do not want to be in these scenarios. Because it's Kiaia going to be able to walk away from that one, but he said it. Baron spawns. Loud is saying, hey, that looks nice and pretty, but let's go and take it. What if we took all the buffs? What, what if we get the earliest soul we could possibly think of and then take a Baron off, basically off spawn? Yeah, uh, basically, Loud say, can we have it? And Gam just have to say yes. Yeah. There is nothing they can do to get out of way from their base. Like, that mid lane turret is holding on with a struggle. Because the second you step up, you're going to have so many different flank opportunities that come in behind them. And here again, like, Gam are all kind of set up to go, hey, we can try and keep this safe. But Kati separates for a second. Croc takes his chance. Pallet uses the hook thinking there might be a flash over the wall yeah. and trying to preempt it, but ends up meaning that he doesn't have his hook up and available. And then again, Loud 
collapsing quicker, in a better position. Slater not really there because he's trying to clear a mid wave, and Loud are able to follow up nice and easy. And this has just started from the get go by Loud. This is Loud turned around and said, bot lane is our priority as they come out with the Red Bull Baron power play, but bot lane is their priority. Root is their carry, and this guy is doing so well with giving that responsibility. I mean, this game is sheer bot lane diff. Yeah. The level one and level two going as wrong as it did for Slater and Pallet gave the freeze. Croc was in a position to just continue letting Root and Sayos have that freeze. Root getting two solo kills in the bot lane as well. Like, it has not been a good look coming through for the Gam bot lane. Now you have 30 seconds for Gam to kind of fight against this Ocean Soul. Now, I will say it's one of the souls that people tend to kind of go, look, we don't have to fight it. But I mean, you, you got to go for something here. Like, you're looking at a three item Kaisa here for Root. He has just been insane right now. Three, zero, and five. Just a monster in his own right. Level 14, like, he's the same level as Kiai in the top right. He's the same level as a solo laner. Yeah, I mean, the kills and assists will do that for you. And Loud, they kind of know that they're in a great position. Siege up here on bot side, they have a lot of opportunities to try and escape away. Like, Sales, very difficult to lock down. Croc, because the ultimate, kind of difficult to lock down. So they're just going to let Tin Owens push in in mid. And I thought he was going to look for the mid turret, but it looks like they want to try and take a fight as Gamma are a bit far away from safety. Yeah, Gam will not have many places to run if they do get caught. And you can see there, Pallet recognizing that and just kind of throws a hook away. I mean, you got to go for something. TP back into the fight is going to be Robbo off to the side. He's looking for a master flank. They do get a hook on, but it's only on to Seo. So the Rakan's going to be able to walk away. He doesn't even use any of his cooldowns. They're looking for something. They're waiting for something, but that something is just not going to happen. And now they're getting turned on because they realize they've overstepped. Robbo's on a flank. And they can start to pinch in. The Equalizer comes down to try and stop anyone from moving in, but Robbo just gets himself into the stopwatch. The Pop Blossom of Tinos signs the death warrant here with the ultimate. Loud get everything. Gam have nothing. And this game is all but over. Tinos goes kaboom and shuts out Gam in this one. The push on bot side is going to be the death knell coming through as Tinos <laughs> just being a nuisance, just being annoying as they will continue to push forward. Continuing with a push, they'll get it on all lanes. They might not end the game just yet, but they've still got Baron for 10 seconds. They are going to do some serious damage right now. They'll get themselves at least two inhibitors, and honestly, they can go back, reset, spend all the gold, put your T's down, dot your I's. You've got all the time in the world, and you have all the advantages as well. Yeah, like, there's just nothing left for you here, Gab. I'm sorry for you, but when the bot the early game goes this disastrously on bot lane, when Croc's able to correct the lane and top side, there is zero that can be done. And your entire jungle will go with it as well. It's only a matter of time until they would coordinate themselves on top side. But this was brilliant. Like Robo end up in a position where he's able to get the flank. He's corralling Gam into a perfect position. Levi overextends, trying to see if he can get a steal, but is in a position. Robo over the wall into Pana, but watch Tin Owens. Out of vision. Nobody knows. Nobody knows as Tin Owens goes in and sets up beautifully. And what a, a, just again, just Robbo again, who's part of our, you know, uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, featured matchup, is that he just goes in going, I have a stopwatch. It doesn't matter if they all try and turn and burn on me because I'm going to be able to delay it. And that's exactly, it was the perfect bait. And it's exactly what happened. But I mean, yeah, look, Root's having an absolutely exceptional game. And even has a stopwatch as well to keep him from dying, should he even ever get caught. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is Root having a moment for himself on the world stage looks absolutely spectacular and kind of showing what a lot of people were unsure of was like how can loud have these strong early games like can they do it on an international stage and this is a resounding voice from yes from the loud uh, crowd this is absolutely incredible to see Loud crowd. And that's the thing as well. We always come in. Oh, just to say that. We see Seos might be getting caught out here. They're looking for a hex flash over the wall from the Nautilus, but they have to hold there for a second or two. Everyone just kind of walks away. Didn't have the timing on that, unfortunately. But that's the thing. Like, we look domestically. We look at how Loud have really come out and, you know, kind of dominated uh, Brazil. And it does feel like it kind of gets a little bit of a, you know, you kind of get a bit of an echo chamber. You're not quite sure how they stack up. But this. This particular display of, of dominance is showing us just how good they are. And it just feels like right now we are coming at this team from such a, an incredible point of power. And they are feeling good. 
Red's feel a lot better as they're gonna go under here. He's gonna go in, but they have actually been able to catch out Croc, and, Croc, and he's not gone down just yet. Now he has. Robo does have a GA, but he wouldn't like to use it just yet. His mom gets used, and there's gonna be an equalizer to try and stop them all. They get the knock up here, double down. The feathers come in, and Rue picks up a kill. Hulk goes out, Rue shoots himself right into the backside. Triple go for the Kaiser, looking for a little bit more as well. Not quite able to get the last few uh, auto attacks there onto the Zaya, but will turn and burn no for the way. quadra kill. And they have On to die. They have Day to one. dive it. Give him the penta. You have to go for it right now. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get it on day one. He's got a couple more seconds. They're looking for it. They got the inhibitors down. They got the Nexus turrets as well. Finally, here they go. There's Slater with the stopwatch. Finally, they go in under the turret. It is going to be a penta kill for Roush. What a way to enter the world stage! A pentakill for Root to kick us off on the playing stage! Pickums better be able to be changed because we're just setting up beautifully for it! Your Pickums are locked and loaded, but my god, Loud are just getting started! What an incredible display of dominance from the CB Law number one seed! I mean, that is anything but just exceptional. That was yeah. just exceptional from minute one. They never faltered. They never gave Gam an opportunity. And I mean, if I'm Gam, like, I mean, what were you going to do? There was no opportunities. I mean, this is like the best representative we've had from CBL for a while. Like three back-to-back -back title wins for this team. The first ever in CBLOL history. You got Robo, who's now matching BRTT for most titles ever. This is a team that is decorated to the nines. And now you come out as well with a performance like that. That was incredible to watch. Just a joy, genuinely a joy to kind of go for it. But I mean, loud, I, I, I can be nothing but praise. And you yeah. know, you know what, Goldberg, I'm sorry I doubted you because like, my <laughs> God. Yeah, no, he didn't. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> Thanks. But whatever. You know, again, it's just, it's just exceptional. It's so much to be said. Enough from us, though. We're going to send it back over to the analyst desk to say even more about this no, exceptional no, lull. No, right. no, 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 right. no, 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 What are you saying? What are you saying? Wait, hold on. What are you saying? Hang on. Do you want to apologize to him? Because he said Gam was going to win game one. That's true. I didn't ever say that. He said that. The question was, who won the draft? I said, I think Gam had the better draft. He betrayed him. League of Legends is about gameplay. And the best gameplay on this first game was loud. Stop. Disgraceful. Let's get rid of the costas. Thank you very much. Get out of here. Fantastic cost. To all the viewers at home, I apologize about that chaos, and I will <laughs> once again reiterate, while Gulborg, the analyst, right. predicted Loud to win the series, he predicted Gam to win game one. And if we can, take you a look can't just at, make the, up um, stories. at the picks and bands graphic. Oh, uh, are we in P oh, PGP, great. The, the team comps will come up here perfectly. I have a question for my incorrect predicting analyst, Gulborg. Yeah, go on, then. If Gam cannot win with this composition, can they even win a game? I mean, absolutely. Uh, they still can. I think this was probably just something where it went a bit wrong in the early game. But let's be real. To your question, them getting this draft and fumbling it this much, I mean, it should never really happen. And like, even with Kiaya getting ahead, he made Ropo's uh, lane completely unplayable. Like, that Rumble should have just yeah. been able to be left alone. Now Levi can just focus on mid and bot lane. You know what the problem was? Isolated mid and bot lane could not function against their opponents. It just collapsed from laning phase and just never worked out for them. I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Look, at least, at least with you, you were a coward, okay? You didn't admit that you were wrong. Me? Imagine this is a flip-flop on flip-flopping. I just, in general, uh, I think Loud's playing too well. I think Root oh. is just taking over. Um, I'm a bit ashamed of myself. Okay, so let's, okay, so let's, let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. Okay, we've had a lot of fun. It was an entertaining okay. game. I want to now focus in on the teams, right? Oh so God, we've, we've made fun of all the honor talent. Let's focus on the fact that that bottom lane, I mean... Roots just popped off. His Kaiser was absolutely incredible. And I think this this is unfair, so please do understand where I'm coming from. But Gam had struggles in MSI, yeah. weren't able to really um, get over some of the challenges in the bottom lane. That was one of the big changes. We talked about the substitutions that would even happen this summer, right? And after a game like that, where you see Rout literally 1v basically nining in, yeah. in many situations, it's got to be difficult heartbreaking. And this is where I will admit I was wrong. Because I actually thought that Rout had poor laning phase at times in playoffs, where I thought that Slater's laning was actually quite good, but it was never just facilitated. That was completely wrong for this game. Raud and Seos was just straight up better. And the bot lane of Gam just had issues where they could not function. So huge credit to Raud. Solo kills on the Kaiser just yeah. by landing Ws coming in. We saw the Lef 
Lethality build. I'm not always happy about the Lethality build. This is one of the ones where it works, and you can see why it works, especially when you snowball as early as you do. Rez, I want you to talk a little bit more about what Cobo just said, because after every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, Roots Kaiser secures himself two solo kills to gain that massive advantage in the bottom lane. We've discussed it, we've seen the impact, but now I want to watch it a bit more sexy way. It was very volatile before this as well, so he found an angle. That W flash was perfect to be able to get that kill too. And so, didn't happen just once. It happened twice. And this I know, was awesome. Yeah, I know we focused a lot on, just want to see this one more time because it was just that good. Slater didn't even have the opportunity. Could have flashed a little earlier, but he didn't expect I the damage. I mean, listen, damage. he was playing with his hands and one foot tied behind his back. Dagda saw it. Like, that's that's how he was <laughs> playing the game, you know? I also think it just comes down to the rune optimization there. You can easily see how many autos come through with the... That's pretty impressive, You're going to continue? Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> okay, well, I'm doing, I'm you can see you doing that. Impression. But hey, Blades, getting those three auto attacks in really quickly where we're so used to see lethal tempo for so many yes. uh, for Kaisers instead. Also, just completely surprised later with the lethality damage. One thing that we all uh, focused on pretty heavily is the fact that he did this within the lane, but then he transitioned that mid lane. Absolutely. Um, during one of the replays of that like kill that he ended up having, he went straight through mid, found an ulti, killed Orianna. I was like, okay, I guess he's just transitioning this and taking over the map. I also really, really like the lethality build this game, Goldberg. You highlighted it like 10, 12 minutes in. Like, look at the team comp. Look, what, you know, what, what, there's no front line. There's nothing to really worry about. And look, 11-0-5, 46% of his team's damage. 46%. Yeah. And the pentakill right at the end as well in our second series of Worlds 23. You no, know, that's crazy. And uh, that's a standout wow. performance that really speaks to itself there. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, there's instances where you have to kill a tank. This was not one of them. This was one of them where you could just take over. Even getting a pentakill at the end, which I think was very deserved for yes. him too. Amazing performance around, and it was a stomp coming out from loud. I've got one more replay package to, to round out this game before we look ahead. Um, let's take a look at those late game team fights. The game was over well before this, and it was unlosable was the phrase that I was I was hearing. trying to sit in here and make some call, um, calls out for what I think should be done in the gameplay right here, and it, it Lau was just so ahead that they could skip so many of the steps. Even going for this tier two could have been dangerous, or they could have just traded with the Ariana continuing to split push. This fight is sketchy too. I think Gam is really welcoming yeah. a lot of the late game team <laughs> fights where they just, they feel like there's nothing left for them in this game. They can only fight to get back into it, and we're playing against the laners of Loud, who's already so far ahead. Head. There's nothing you can do to get back into it. Loud had problems with macro at CP Law when they were playing playoffs. This was not one of the game where it happened. Also, uh, remind me, but didn't Loud get better after 20 minutes? They're a team that didn't necessarily have this um, dominant of a laning phase. I, I would think... be surprised normally if I saw a good early game right. by Loud, and this so, one they came straight out the gate swinging. You know, at 20 minutes, they were up 4 5k. Well, Root was up 4 5k. The rest of the team was pretty much even. But um, just the way they play laning phase, the way they transition, it was beautiful to see. I want to move on from game one. We've only got a couple minutes left. Uh, Gam has selected blues. Oh, we only have 30 seconds. Cool. Okay, so Raz, I apologize. We'll get back to you at the end of the next one. As we head towards game <laughs> two, let's enjoy oh, the view of our play-ins host, City Soul, through the lens of the upper game. I'm sorry, Raz. You don't get 30 seconds I, next time. I, you don't talk, you will come in. We're you. I yeah. time. <laughs> Anyways, goodbye. We'll see you on the next <laughs> I feel like Slater really wanted to fully commit to that. Now they can fully turn back on. Hello, Slater! We wait for or are we, are we I think you just two points, you know? Two guys wing, you can go. Oh, nice. Yeah, go nice. a bit aggressive on that top side. Still a bit of damage here, but uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think the Renekton really wants this one here. And a flash oh. forward, he gets overheated, he has enough damage! They're looking for it, they got the inhibitors down, they got the Nexus turrets as well. Finally, here they go, there's Slater with the stopwatch. That was oh. nice!